I think if you pick him up and put him in the Man United team, people are going to go mad about this. I think he creates more than Bruno Fernandes does. Bruno Fernandes will have more shots oh. from outside the box. Last week, we looked at who the top five players in the Premier League are right now. Now we're going to have a look at who are the top five most underrated players in the Premier League right now. I put this on Twitter. It went mad. Some people were talking about uh, all-time underrated players. We can look into that. I'll tell you what, I'm going to clip this up. I'm going to put this on YouTube. So if we get to, if I get over a thousand likes, we'll do the all-time Premier League top five underrated players, which we might struggle with stats in, but I can dive into because we've got some stats here as well. I think the best way to do it is we'll have uh, put yours in the chat right now. We'll have a look at that. Me and Rabo have put together a bit of a list. I've got a few extra uh, names in here, but I, I looked at the stats for this one and there were some that really did jump out at me. Um, Rabo, I'm, I'm quite intrigued to l let you go first with this. If there's a player that... Is there a player that you think that I won't rate that you do really rate to kick us off. And then at the end of this, uh, we'll, we'll we'll give our five. We'll put them in order. Ooh, ooh okay. Is, is there a player that I rate that I think you might not rate? I think, to be fair, most of my list, thing is you know football. So I think there's not a, there's not a lot of difference between the lists we have, I don't think. You but been reading I'll put on probably the one out... Yeah, I have. And I can't believe people are like, oh, you're on a bat, mate. You don't watch football, do you? Shut up. Yeah. Um, there's probably one that I think you might not expect me to have on. So I'll go with him. Okay. Uh, James Ward-Prowse. I think he's, he's a very middle-class white lad. We have been through middle-class white lads many times. Um, loves his waitress apples, just like James. <laughs> That's such a nice joke now and <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basically James loves Waitrose apples and crunches them before they're every single They're not from Waitrose, uh, they're from Tesco's. You don't go, from te you don't go to Waitrose for your... Waitr you don't go to Waitrose for your main bits, for your main shop. You go there for your bits. Everyone knows that, come on. Anyway, James Ward-Prowse. Uh, I've, I've never even been into Waitrose. Anyway, uh, James Ward-Prowse, I think he's developed his game from where a lot of people are saying he's the next David Beckham. He's got really good technique. I think a lot of people had him as this like glorious, cute player, but actually he's not that intricately detailed as a footballer. So I think he's gone. I can now be a bit more of a Hoiberg, if you like, in the sense of his work rate and his his tenacity and his ability to break down the play. And stats-wise, you might look at his stats and go, he doesn't have that many shots on goal and things like that, but he plays every single minute for Southampton. He's become a captain. Uh, listen to me when I say this. James Ward-Prowse is about five foot two. And he never been gym. He never done bench. He never and he's captain gym. of Southampton. He's probably the hardest guy in that team. He's probably the hardest guy on that team. So he's underrated because I think nobody talks about him. Nobody talks about him. Um, how do you feel about James Ward-Prowse? I like it. I was just looking up. So I used FB Ref because everyone asked me, where do I get all the stats from? FB Ref, it's very, very good. Um, uh, I just had a quick look there. I think, so the thing with him, when you look at him, you look at his, I was thinking his past completion, but it was the first thing that I was going to, I was wondering where would he be at with this? And and he's, in that, he's 11th at the moment. And I think when I look at this, in terms of passes completed, him being up there, I, I would sort of take out some of the defenders in, in this list because generally, yeah. and I kind of this will link on to my first uh, underrated player because I was looking at this person's uh, stats and I was just like, wow. But I think Ward Prowse, I think Southampton had some growing pains here a little bit, um, but I think he's someone that they can really rely on. I think he's uh, he's a good player. He's a really good player. I don't, he has little purple patches kind of along the way, which makes you think that he is decent. And then he kind of goes back to back to mm. back into his box. I'm not really sure. I guess he's kind of a, in a midfield three. He's he can kind his versatility is very very useful, which will probably allow him to remain underrated, which is what this is all about. So that, James Ward Prowse is a good shout. Yeah. It's a good shout. I'll see your James Ward Prowse. Okay. Who? And I'll raise okay. you a Pierre Hoiberg. This guy. His passing stats at the moment, because this was the one I was talking about. I was saying I wanted to kind of put down my list of players and then I want to see if if the stats backed it up a little bit. Because sometimes we know you can twist stats all over the place and that's understandable. But I just felt like every time I watch Hoiberg, and I do look out for the centre midfield, as I always do, but when I've seen him yeah. play, I just feel like he's, he sees danger brilliantly. 
He um, he keeps the ball brilliantly. He comes and gets it. He feels like so different to a lot of centre midfielders where they're they're one or the other. And then I looked at his passing stats and I was just blown away with the amount of passes that he's making. So this is, look at the, this, first of all, completed passes, absolutely miles ahead of an Andrew Robertson, who we know is involved in the game a hell of a lot. His pass completion rate, look at that, 90% is yeah, madness. Insane. The, um, I thought the one I really liked, total distance, I thought this was really interesting because he's, get, he's moving mm. the ball forward. That's the thing I wanted to kind of get across is it's all good picking up the, the ball in those areas, which he does, but he's moving the ball forwards so much. It's like, it's crazy. He's absolutely tearing it up. He's, he's, he's been, yeah. he's been amazing. I think uh, we, we said it a few weeks ago that if there's a, sorry, Karen. Well, no, the only, the, the only other thing I wanted to say was, I think it was, uh, I think it might've been his tackling as well. When I was looking at defensive actions, I think he was right there as well when it came to the amount of, um, amount of yeah. uh, tackles that he, he won. Uh, Spurs and Jose's team missed that midfielder that could basically clean up, but also make them progressive in transition. Um, and I think Hoiberg literally ticks every single box for Jose. Hardworking, gritty, solid uh, attitude, came at a cheap price, loves the game, plays his heart out, always fit, hardly ever injured, um, and a genuine hard man in midfield who also has the ability to play like a, a really naughty pass. I always say this about him. I can't believe he's Danish because he feels really German. That's probably the best way to sum up Hoiberg, um, uh, in my opinion, that obviously. That he had at Southampton, um, a lot of people spoke about when he came to Spurs there was the idea he's just going to sit and dig a hole and um, but Spurs um, Southampton fans were saying that he's not that kind of player he's he's a player that can he can be a kind of box to box player and actually sometimes when a when a that box to box kind of midfielder who's you know can dribble with the ball under pressure he's got good feet has a bit of creativity to them when they kind of move up a level and by move up a level I mean maybe move up to a team that's kind of being a bit more dominant and then move back a little bit Mm. You can offer up a, a bit of everything. Um, going to what I was trying to show, was, I think it was what I quite liked about him was uh, in the middle third, the amount of uh, tackles that he was making as well. But it was for more than anything, it was the passing stats with him that I was just uh, amazed yeah. by. And I think Audio he's one Romeo, that man. Really like for a long time. Yeah, Romeo right up there for, yeah. for those tac uh, tackles. Sticking with tackles, the next name that I've got is uh, Matthias Go Click. Matthias Click. Ah, I knew you were going to put this guy in. Tackles, right? Tackles one. 15 out of 15 tackles. Now, this is obviously down to the style of, of Leeds United and how they play. But uh, what I found really interesting when I was diving into it was the fact that when he goes for a tackle, he's winning it. And, and he's almost, there's sort of these offensive players with such high defensive stats. I just think it's amazing. The pressures as well. Look at this. This is madness. I love this website. The the pressures that he's made. Yeah, like, I know. I could tell. <laughs> I just think it's fascinating because I think when we're looking at underrated stuff, yeah. that, look, the eye test is important. I've been really impressed by Leeds and the way that they play. But if you look at the uh, at pressures uh, and successful pressures, I thought he was up there for successful. Maybe he's not. But sorry, pressures in total. That's it. Success overall. He's he's just miles ahead. Mm. Uh, pressure's 147. Yeah, yeah. And now, take him out of that team, put him in a different team. He's not as good. Of course he's not. But I think as this season progresses, I think Leeds are going to have a really good season because I just think there's such a shock value in the way that they play. And I think him in that three, um, of uh, him, is it him, Harrison, and I'm going blank now with the final one. Is it Costa maybe? Those three... I think it's yeah. just been really, really impressive, and I think he's been the I think he's been the best of the three of them. So that's why I, I put him in there whilst we're uh, looking at tackles. And I actually I knew you were going to put in click those because you've spoken about him a few times. I don't disagree. I think he is very, very underrated. I'd be interested to see, like you just said, does he work in a different team? Does he work in a different system? I think Bielsa's players are literally designed for a system, um, and there is one we're definitely going to come to at some point. But only because we're on the topic of midfielders, mm. I'm going to raise you one more <laughs> in midfield and go Jordan Henderson. So obviously you knew I was going to say that name. Everybody I'll go, knew I'll I was going to say that name. It's very predictable. That you're going to love. I'll find a stat for you right now. That you love. Carry on. I think. I'm I think I, I've, I've seen, basically I saw a, a few stats on him earlier this week um, and I was like, there's for me, when you look at Jordan Henderson and if you look at Liverpool's form uh, in relation to Jordan Henderson's 
form stroke when he's available, you can see the massive correlation that Liverpool play better when Henderson's on the pitch. Yeah. Even this week, you've seen against... I mean, Everton last week, he scores the winning goal, which obviously gets disallowed. He's put in the cross for Mane's header for Firmino to score in a game where Liverpool are stuck. Those aren't his best assets, as in that's not his, the best part of his game. The best part of his game isn't to create. It, it's not his job. But he's now almost going, Trent, you're not in great form. I'll sort of move to the right-hand side a little bit. And Rob, Rob Whitaker mentioned, mentioned it earlier, Thiago's arrival will mean that Henderson has to again adapt his game. The biggest thing I rate about him is when Liverpool needed a six against um, when Fabinho hadn't wasn't fully fit or I think he was injured, Van Dijk, um, Henderson dropped in there and done a job. Then last season, towards the end of last season, or the season, yeah, I think it was towards the end of last season, Fabinho came in and Liverpool needed an attacking midfielder. Henderson went and did that job. He contributed goals and assists in that position. Now Liverpool need a player who can play off the right hand side to go for Trent and also do his defensive dog work and also be available constantly on the ball. He's doing that job. I think his adaptability to the way he plays his position for Liverpool's midfield three is absolutely nailed on. And I don't know if you managed to find the stat I'm yet. I'm trying to find um, it, right? Because I think basically, this might not this might not be the best way to find him, but basically the points that they get when he's in the team is was last season, as I'm looking yeah. at last season now, was 2.79 points per game. Um, and the yeah. next best, I think, was Salah, who was it was quite a, a little jump down from it. So I think that was the point that I was trying to find. I, I wasn't able to find it. This is from last season. But the amount of points that you get when he's in the team was was higher than anyone else in the league by quite a way. So I, I get it. Is he underrated though? I think there's been so yeah, bro. Much nobody rates him. Yeah, I mean, mo, mo, like saying whether someone's underrated or overrated is so subjective because, like, me and you both have rated Henderson. So, like, when you're putting the two guys in the same room who yeah. rated him for ages together, if you chuck in a Manchester United fan or a fan who doesn't like midfielders who do that job, which, as me and you both know, there is many of them. Um, like, lots of people immediately, if you're watching this and, and you prefer attacking players, will go, what the... Are you free? What are you two doing? You're putting Hoiberg, Ward, Prowse, and Henderson. This is Brexit FC. To me, these players make the game. <laughs> these players make the game happen. So, um, and click, click as well. Honorable shout out, click as well. Um, there you go. There's Rob's just said, I'm a United fan and I don't rate Hendo. So there you go. And immediately the comment after go. says, Henderson is underrated. And all I says, Henderson is overrated. There you go. That's the point. <laughs> okay. So next up. Right. Uh, I've got, we're kind of moving into the attacking players now. I, I was, for, the first one I was going to go for was um i might have, i'm gonna go with uh attacking players midfielders now this this might be the same thing but i think what what impressed me so much was just how dominant this person is in terms of the the, the chances that they're creating because when in terms of sh i think in shot creating actions i think this is this is quite uh interesting for, stats, for people man. to see because because Expected goals is uh, sorry. Expected goals is one thing, or assists, in more imp more importantly, is is one thing. But you're dependent on the opposition in terms of the chances that are created from it. So again, I'm going to be trying to find these as we go along. But next person I'm going to put forward is Jack Grealish, just because I I, I actually think he's <laughs> playing like he's in a different world at this stage. Maybe it's because. He's at Aston Villa, and by that I, I mean he—he he is everything. He's so—he's so crucial to to the way that they play, and has been for the last couple of seasons. He was right up there last season as well uh, in, in terms of um, shot creating actions. The one in particular that I thought was really interesting when I was diving through these stats was that was. Um, live passes so not dead ball stuff like if, if you remember remember David Beckham kept playing for England and you could kind of understand why because when you got a set piece you had a real chance of scoring a goal with Jack Grealish mm. I always think it's far more impressive if you're doing it in the moment you're creating something from from nothing and and he's really doing that he's really really doing that this year 23 uh, shot creating actions from uh, live passes uh, that was another one Matthias Click was up there actually which highlights it, but again, this I think that's down guy to the is star. everywhere, bro. <laughs> Sorry, he's he's Matthias Click is everywhere. Every yeah. single stat I've seen you load over, he's there in the top ten. <laughs> yeah, I think no, his XG is really high as well. Shots per ninety, a little bit lower from Jack Grealish, but I think that was the one for me. And if you look at it last season as well, he's right up there as well. I think it's even more impressive last season because now he's got some people to help him out. Last, last, sorry, last season he had no one to help him out. Like Samata was terrible. I think I remember us doing FBL FYI and him coming in January thinking, oh no, he might do something. No, he's been absolutely awful. 
Vesley obviously was injured for a long time. You've now got Ollie Watkins, who is someone that we could chuck in there. I think the problem with him, though, is he played for Brentford. And when you play for Brentford, everyone rates you. <laughs> that's just the way that yeah. it works. His uh, his expected goals is really, really high in comparison to everyone. That's obviously due to probably that the Liverpool outlier a little bit in terms of those games. But I just think, I, I think there's a talking point with Grealish just to understand, is he rated now? Is he kind of hipster he is. rated? You- or is he actually even better than that? That was the thing that I was getting at. Like, is he even better than that? See, I was going to argue this and say, who doesn't rate Jack Grealish? Apart from Gareth Southgate everybody else rates Jack Grealish I also don't I think Gareth Southgate rates him as well I just think he has a particular style of play and Grealish doesn't fit that as perfectly as he wants but I think everybody I can't I I haven't met anyone who doesn't think Jack Grealish isn't a very good footballer my biggest question for Jack Grealish is and probably for you as well is if you pick Jack Grealish up and chuck him in a team that doesn't rely solely on Jack Grealish. It isn't Jack Grealish's world and everybody else is living in it. Is Jack Grealish still as good as that? Maybe that's the issue at England at the moment where yeah. they're trying to find a way to play him, but he almost just runs everywhere. Anywhere he wants, he can go do whatever he wants for Villa. Um, I'm just conscious of whether them two things, can he do it somewhere else? And I who agree. doesn't rate Jack Grealish? Bro? I've been fr- I think the, the Southgate thing, Southgate not liking him. I agree with you. I think it's it's almost like it's a bit like the Lampard thing where you've got all these great players and you're trying to fit them in, into one team right now, and and that's the thing with that Grealish doesn't have to worry about at, at Villa. The the question is how good is he? That's why I come back to is he a little bit underrated? Because what I'm saying, I, I'm saying if you look, at, he can be relied upon to be that responsibility. I think he is actually that good, and so that's my point. I actually think I think if you pick him up and put him in the Man United team, people are going to go mad about this. I think he creates more than Bruno Fernandes does. Bruno Fernandes will have more shots from outside the box. He'll have more shots. Uh, like Those stats will be through the roof, but that's not Grealish as a player. I think if you pick up Grealish and you put him in that Man United team, I think that Man United team, maybe he doesn't score as many goals. That's I mean, that's one thing that Bruno's definitely got on him. But overall, I think they would create more with Jack Grealish in the team because there's there's you cannot defend against someone with with his ability to dribble. I think he's just, I think he's amazing. I think he's absolutely amazing. Mm. And I think he's, he's mm. I think he's made a mistake. Aston Villa fans will hate me for this. I think he's made a mistake signing for five years because I think he's one major tournament away from a massive, massive uh, 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 transfer because you don't have to worry about, can he deal with the responsibility? Can he... Uh, deal with being the main man like is he physically going to get injured a lot of the time like, all these things I think he's amazing I honestly think he's so good he's just been playing for uh, Aston Villa I think Aston Villa fans would agree with me I think they'd be amazed that he signed a five year deal I, I, that's not digging out Aston Villa mm, it's just digging yeah, out yeah, that, where that, Aston Villa are right now do you know what I mean um, yeah, th- that was their best signing this summer Jack Grealish yeah. um, alright so you've got Grealish I've got one that I think we both 100% agree on um Mikel Antonio, the geezer hasn't got an England call up yet, and I ca- I don't for the life of me understand why. Like maybe I don't know. Maybe he, you you feel like England should have more technical players, but really and truly, is Dominic Calvert Lewin much more technical than Antonio, or is Ings much more technical than Antonio? Maybe he doesn't fit the mould. But what I'm saying is he's got to be a fourth option. Because if you've got Calvert-Lewin, Ings and Kane, the difference between Kane, Ings and Calvert-Lewin in terms of style of play isn't very different. Kane drops in, but he's still a natural-born goal scorer. Same for Ings and same for Calvert-Lewin. Antonio is a genuine nuisance for any team he plays against. He's so powerful, he's so quick, and he runs the channels, and he works his socks off, and he can play wide left, he can play wide right, although I do believe his favourite position is through the middle, and that's where he's best. Stats-wise as well, he plays for a West Ham side that literally create half chances left, right and centre. Mikel Antonio not getting an England call-up just makes mate, no sense to me. I'm like, so, it's, mate, you've literally read my mind. I've got, a, I'm, I'm ready to go on an England squad video if Antonio is not in the next squad. Yeah. It's an absolute, it'd be a travesty. The only thing that will, the only thing that will let him down is the fact that Inns, Inns is scoring, Cavalier scoring, Kane scoring. He'll be let down by that, but he deserves to be in that squad. He deserves, because he has caught fire. I was looking at it uh, on uh, Transfer Market, the positions that he's played, and it's 
from sort of January onwards, and this is the other one, I'll, I'll chuck into the mix just because, um, and I won't show you the stat, but I'll tell you the stat, that Jared Bowen, his, the sort of points per game that, asked, uh, that West Ham get when he's in the team, both last season when he came in in January and this season as well, is really, really high. And I think the two of them work brilliantly together, but I don't think Jared, you don't get the best out of Jared Bowen really if Antonio isn't as good as he is. And you look at his XG here, yeah. the one that I focused on here is non, uh, no penalties. You know, look at the players that are around him. Malpai, maybe do you, do you say that he's a little bit more, um, uh, is he a little bit more uh, underrated than Antonio? I don't, I don't know. Um, but I think Antonio has been, people have been mm. sleeping on him for a long, long time. I think he's amazing. There's a two we could chuck in here as well, because I think Malpai, I think people, he needs, he needs a good season this year. Obviously, look, four goals, which is great. But I think for the chances that he's getting, and you see his XG there is really strong, that he needs to he needs to have a 15, 20 goal season this year. Um, otherwise, you can start to get a bit frustrated with him. Um, Patrick Bamford, I think, has got to be the other one that we need. To, we need to talk about Patrick Bamford, oh, Rambo, because you've not been sure about him for a long time. The boy comes out, picks out a hat trick, absolutely ridiculous goals, ridiculous goals. Is he underrated, Rambo? Answer the question. Yeah, mm, mm, I don't know, you know. Thing is, I think he definitely gets way too much flack than what he deserves because people lay into this guy a bit too much. People talk about him like David Nugent, but you have to remember when he when he had his first stint in the Premier League, he was injured a lot. I think he's had this is his third stint, maybe. One of them he was on loan, I can't remember perfectly. Um he has started this season well. He does a lot for the Bielsa system. But if I pick Bamford up from Leeds and say, go and do a job at, I don't know, Aston Villa, he ain't doing the job for me. Um, he scored, and, and, and we discussed this before we started, actually. I think he's benefiting so much without having crowds there because he's one of these players that fans really get on top of. I don't know why. There's certain players that people just don't like or just really enjoy jumping on top of. And he's one of them. He's one of these guys that he misses a chance and his own, like leads have been quite loyal to him. But fans on social and things really just jump on top of him and make his life hell. He did score two incredible, incredible goals. But his third goal, Bamford does not try that if there's 40,000 people at that ground, in my opinion. Um, is he underrated? Is he overrated? <laughs> Oh, that's a horrible one. Thing is, some, you rate him. I don't particularly. I rate. I rate. Um, I rate yeah. what he. I rate what he does for because I. Do you know what? It clicked for me at the. It clicked for me um, watching extended highlights of the Villa Leeds game. And if you watch those goals, I remember watching QPR beat Leeds uh, in the FA Cup third round. It was like a miracle because QPR don't win those kind of games. But I remember watching that game and I remember seeing Patrick Bamford. And often with with, with centre forwards, you people play the people kind of play the channel on the side of the ball. They often they often kind of look, they work that that angle to give that that option to them. What he does because I remember going, why isn't Bamford making that run? Why isn't like when it was down the right hand side or why isn't Bamford making that run when it was on the left hand side? He stays away, he stays away from it, and that's there's an, obviously a very clear temptation for a lot of strikers to do that, but he stays away from it and it allows the third runner to be uh, to to have the space to do that, and it will then in turn give him more chances when the ball finally makes its way into the box. If you look look at the goals from the from the weekend, it's uh, it's one of those where where he does that a lot, and I think that's yeah. of, of huge use. I think he's he is smart. Now he is smart in terms of his uh, his movement. We were looking at it there. The one thing you can say with him in terms of uh, like shots on target, like look, his goals are right up there right now, but percentages of shots on target, we've got to scroll down a little bit. For him and so Antonio low. Malpai so as well, low. so that might be hurting him a little bit. Goals Mate, to the Sebastian Haller's again. He's a little bit further Sebastian down. Sebastian Haller's ahead of him. Well, yeah, Sebastian Haller um, was it sixty three minutes? Yeah. He's got one goal. He's not done bad. So yeah, I, 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 oh, I like Bamford. I think he's. Yeah. I think he's underrated because I think people don't like him. That's that's the beauty of this subjective yeah. term of but being underrated. I, 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 just read uh, a comment saying uh, we don't like posh boys. I thought he was posh as well, but I've just checked. He's from Grantham, mate. Grantham's a shit hole. It's like, apologies, bleeped out in the YouTube video, but uh, Grantham is a terrible place. And he's also been loaned to like the most horrible places in England uh, to play football. So, I mean, I, I, yeah, people don't like him, but I think I'm with this comment, which will confirm why he's overrated. Patrick Bamford likes, likes crunchy apples from Waitrose. So therefore he's overrated. Yeah, yeah. I'm <laughs> 
I mean, yeah, I'm more of a Tesco's man myself, so I can uh, understand why you've said that. Uh, final yeah, one, I'm just going to uh, chuck yeah, in there, Jamie that. Vardy, uh, because <laughs> he just does not get the he does yeah. not get the praise. So in the tweet that I put out, people were saying, why when you think top three strikers, is he putting that top three strikers? Maybe that's a top five for another time. But Jamie Vardy. His goals to shot conversion. Song Hun Min, is he a little bit underrated as well? Because he's on fire at the moment. But Vardy, season after season, does bits. Season after season. He's amazing. Doesn't get the credit. I think he I think he kind of is underrated. I think if he's called if he looks different, if he's called something different. Yeah. I was just going to say that, like, not genuinely, not even to be a prick, but if Jamie Vardy's name isn't Jamie Vardy, and if he doesn't have this reputation of, like, I guess, like, he has a reputation of a chav, that, to put it bluntly, people would probably like him. More people talk about him having, like, WKDs and, like, chatting, get banged, and stuff like that. I think that reputation almost for a lot of football fans is, like, uh, like he's good, but he's not polished, so he's not wonderful. Yeah. Um, I think you're right. The guy scores goals. He's, he scores goals I, I don't fun. know if this is and right, but this is madness. He's got six goals from four shots. That's how good this guy is. <laughs> Yeah, that's, I was about to say about these stats, man. Some of these stats are just moving mad. Michael Keane's on top of this one. What is this? Goals goals to shots. What is it? Goals to shots. Basically, he's had two shots. He scored two goals from three shots. Yes. So I don't think <laughs> What's that's right. going on? Right. We can trust definitely the record. It's decent. Yeah. Um, okay, so yeah, yeah, Jamie yeah. Vardy. Uh, 30, someone said in the chat there, that's perfect as well. For a 33-year-old, he's underrated. Mate, he's rapid. When someone's over 30, he's still, rapid. Mate, and his movement's amazing. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, but Vardy likes five, smushy mate. apples from Lidl. Yes, he's a little man, is he? Fair enough. Sorry. Uh, let us know Sorry, the comments where you buy your apples, apples from. Uh, I, I'm Tesco's oh, yeah. Rambo's a Waitrose man, apparently. Um, so, <laughs> Bro, uh, I'm just, I'm just. Oh, hold on, can I just ask you one quick question before we rank these five? Have you ever seen a brown person in Waitrose? You haven't. Let's keep it moving. <laughs> that's, that's, that's racist. <laughs> um, right. <laughs> Yes. So I've, I've got my list in front of me. Is there any that I've missed? Um, I have put... Oh, Raul Jimenez. Raul Jimenez. Criminally underrated baller. Certified baller. Got it got so much tech, so much quality. Um, <laughs> Rob, you can't cancel me, bro. I'm brown. I, I'm, I'm allowed to talk about brown people. <laughs> and I've been to Waitrose, all right? <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> Raul Jimenez is a certified baller. I think uh, season after season, he comes clutch over and over again. Um, <laughs> sorry, I'm just reading these chats. It's, it's actually killing me. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Rare <laughs> people saying, Tillemans, people saying, what are they talking yeah. about? No. Jamie Vardy's I think, uh, whole apple. Yeah, Raul Jimenez. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Raul Jimenez. Uh, Raul Jimenez shout. for me. That was a good shout as well. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, right, let's rank them, shall we? Let's rank them. So I've got... So you can only pick five. Uh, Tillemans is good. I th- I'm not sure he's... I'm not sure he's underrated. Uh, Gisco saying we've missed Konza, Fabianski, James Justin, Mason Holgate, Dwight McNeil. Five genuine most underrated guys in the Premier League. What, as in like they're just good lads? Is that what you mean? Mm. I don't know. Uh, just like sound, Let sound, us know in the comments as well who else you would put in there, if there's anyone else. Uh, Jafar, just subscribe. Thank you, mate. Um, so I've got Jimenez, Bowen, Bamford, Vardy, Click, Antonio, Hoiberg, Grealish. Is Pereira underrated? Basuma? Uh-huh. Basuma's maybe mm. one. I'm not sure. is, but he's still small sample those. size. A lot of people saying Ryan Bertrand as well. I like Ryan Bertrand. I think mm. he's had his chance mm. to be rated. I think because he came to Chelsea expecting yeah. a little bit more. James MacArthur is a really good shout. James MacArthur is a really, really good shout. I think we were looking yeah. at it the other day. His but, last year, hold on, hold on, tackles no. one was amazing. Go on. But what are we holding on for? Mm, yeah, it depends what you're rating him for. Like he's doing the job that. Like, I would say, That's with no disrespect job, to him, 95% yeah. of mid. Yeah. yeah, like, like he was really playing within limitations. So is he that underrated? Um, I've got my five, not in order, but I've got my five, I think. Okay. Uh, ah, but I'm missing players. <laughs> oh, I hate this top five business, James. Uh, okay, I've got mine. Uh, okay, I've got second place. Uh, oh. Wait, you put him in order? I'm trying to now. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, Chris Wood, man! What a lad! Oof, this is. Well, are we allowed to? Are we allowed to throw players in that we haven't actually spoken about? Uh, yeah, <laughs> I mean that kind of makes the 
the first eighty percent of the video redundant, but but fine. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Decore was one I was thinking of chucking in as well, but I, I haven't. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna go. Oh, this is grim. Uh, I've got it. I've got mine. Just cutting players for no reason. Okay. Have you? In fifth place for oh, me. I'm Are you just ready? Cutting players fine? for no reason. Oh, yeah, yeah. Go on, go on. Okay, here we go. In or in fifth place. In terms of the five most underrated players in the Premier League right now, and number five for me is Jamie Vardy. Number five. Oh, Jamie same goal. for me. Same for me. I've gone Vardy. Goals after goals after goals. Criminally underrated. <laughs> Laughed at a bit. Laughed at. Doesn't get the respect he deserves. Next up, in fourth place for me, just because he's absolutely dominating the stats, it's Matthias Click. No one's talking mm. about him. No one's going to talk about him. And mm. I feel like that's the whole point of being underrated. If no one's even talking about you right now, and no one is, then and he's dominating it. For that style of that team, and what he v- offers to that team right now, he makes leads click. Great point, Rob. Thank you very much. He's in fourth position. Who are you having fourth? Um, so this defeats the previous 85% of this video, but I've gone Alan. I think he makes everything <laughs> click. For I've just chucked him out of nowhere. Okay. Uh, I, like I just him. love him. I just love him. So Alan in fourth for me, not click. Okay. In third place, just because I think there is so much hype around him, uh, Jack Grealish. I think he's better than anyone mm. even says that he is. I think you kind of go, oh, I like him, I like him, I like him. This guy is well good. He The way he <laughs> creates stuff from nothing, that's the thing for me. Creates he creates chances from absolutely nothing, um, but there is obviously a buzz about him, so I'm putting him in third place. He I've never... gone Raul Jimenez. Um, Jimenez. Didn't really give him as much of a mention as we probably should have done, but uh, I don't think people. That's the thing. That is exactly it. Actually, I've just thought of it right there. I'm so clever. We didn't even talk about him, and he's so underrated. So that's why he's underrated. So that's why he's third on my list. <laughs> yeah, I can understand. I could. I get that. Two years back to back banging so, in the goals. Yeah. Wasn't he linked with Real Madrid, though? No, yeah, but, bro, I've been linked to Real Madrid. Can you be underrated if you linked to Real Madrid? Um, no, but... Do <laughs> Jack Greenish was linked to Real Madrid? What are you talking about? Oh, is he? Rightly so, he's brilliant. Yeah. Uh, second place. Right. <laughs> second place. Uh, I'm going with Hoiberg at second place. Oh, It was I'm close. Gone. Very, very I'm... close. I think this guy... If, if Spurs do something this year, if they get that trophy this year, he could be... He won't get it because he won't have the numbers, but he'll be seen as one of the players of the season. I could see that happening. Okay. Um, I have gone Antonio. Um, it's just think the, the geezer is just unrivaled. There isn't, it's almost like his old school forward. He does everything that old school forwards used to do and they didn't get appreciated for it and now he's not getting appreciated for it. He yeah. doesn't look pretty. Um, not to say he's bad looking, but he just doesn't look pretty when he's got the ball. People don't particularly enjoy um, the way he plays, but I think for what he does, he does exactly what he he is supposed to do. He does his job down to a T. So he's second for me. Uh, first place for you. I'm, you so, I'm so intrigued to hear all this. Right, so first place for me, and he's just said it himself, unrivaled. He's unrivaled, and that's why he's number one. Antonio, you're an absolute <laughs> gem of a person, and it almost makes you underrated because he's worked so hard for that team. He's made his way from Tottenham, Mitchum, Nottingham Forest, working his way through the leagues. I think he's at Reading for a bit. Then at West Ham, and it was wasted for a long time. And they've spent how much money on Sebastian Haller, and and he's keeping him out of the team. He is their number one centre forward. They're doing bits in the league. They've had the worst run of games as well. Let's remember that the games that they've had to play so far have been absolutely awful. And he's just that goal, the goal against Man City. It's amazing. It's an amazing finish. And if you pick someone, another player again. The, pick someone else, another striker who just looks a little bit better, a little bit more smooth, then then everyone's raving about it forever. But we're not even talking about that. No one's talking about that. He's amazing. He's honestly... And he's uh, his work rate's amazing. His hold-up play's brilliant. His feet are great. He's got great movement. He makes runs. Sometimes he makes really unselfish runs, actually, that allow Jared Bowen to do mm. better as well. Um, Jamster says, Jim is overrated at choosing underrated players. I don't think anyone's rated me, actually, so I'm probably underrated. <laughs> so Antonio, for me, is the most underrated player in the Premier League right now. 
So who's your number one? Yeah. When I said unrivaled, when I said unrivaled, I meant in his position. Uh, All right. Yeah. I didn't finish off the sentence properly. I apologize. It's been a long day. Uh, my number one is your number two, uh, Hoiberg. I think what he's, a lot of people are going to talk about Son and Kane and Bale and Reggion and Doherty, but he is the exact player that Jose Mourinho needed for that system. I think he makes everything tick for Spurs. Uh, he's just completely different gravy. And I just love how hard he is. Like, He's just rock solid. The guy's just a nutter. Um, so just like him a lot. Just, I put, just And also he plays the position I used to play. So there's a natural bias towards him. Uh, but it is grim picking a top five because there's. I wanted to put Henderson in there, but people are killing me for saying he's underrated. So I couldn't put him in there. Um, he's so close. Yeah, like, as you're that's, talking that's there, our top five. As you're talking there, it's, it's, grim. it's unri- you know, unrivaled Antonio is rivaled by Hoiberg right now. I think, yeah, those two are amazing. <laughs> right, guys, let us know who you yeah. think the most underrated player in the Premier League is right now. Give us your top five in order yeah. in the comments below.